Well, at 22 minutes past six, let's go under the sea. Marcus Bordieri is with us. Marco is from the Sydney Underwater Gazette. Marco Bordieri, hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Now, you've been diving under the seas of Sydney to look at coral species, in fact, changing coral seas, cor- coral species that lie beneath. Indeed. This week I went uh, diving with uh, two professors from uh, UTS, uh, Professor David Booth and uh, Gigi Beretta, and uh, we went to check the latest on the new species of coral that has uh, appeared in Sydney lately. It's called a Possillopora alice, and is uh, the ninth coral that you can now find here in the coast of New South Wales. And what happens is the waters of the Great Barrier Reef warm, subtropical coral are eating south in search of cooler water. We used to be uh, temperate waters. This area used to be called you know, a temperate area as opposed to the subtropical, which is further north. But we are starting to see subtropical species in our waters, and that's what is called the tropicalization of the coastal New South Wales. Mm-hmm. And what's the difference then between the coral we used to see here, the old coral, and the yeah. subtropical corals? Yeah, so this one is, uh, it looks like a traditional coral that you would expect. So it's a branched coral. So it looks to me like uh, a small um, colony of bonsai uh, tree. It's uh, very bright green as branches. And it's pretty pretty small in a way because it gets, that extends for probably 15 centimeters. While the other coral that you normally see in Sydney, the most probably common is the encrusting coral which means to me remembers a bit like a pizza. If you place a pizza on a rock, it takes the shape of the rock. So it's pretty thin and it's brown or becomes white when it's um, bleached. So this looks more like a coral, the traditional one that we expect from the from the reef, for example. Right. So in Sydney, we've always had that brown looking coral that you say looks like a pizza on the rock. But now yes. we're seeing these bright green bonsai almost like little bonsai tree corals coming from the from the tropics. That's it. The first one was found 10 years ago off uh, Shelley Beach on the ocean side, what is called Deadman's. There is the ocean side coast of Shelley Beach. That was uh, an amateur diver who found it, uh, John Sear, and uh, he alerted the, the, the scientists because it was something new. And since then, a survey site has been established so every year they go checking the size, the extension. And I remember since the first time I saw it a couple of years ago, every year there is a, a, a visible difference. It really extends very fast. And uh, last May also other divers have been found another colony, the first one in the harbor of the broid head. Right. There is another colony, which is newer because it's less developed, but you can tell again, it's quite wide and uh, it's going to go pretty fast. So Marco Bordieri, what's the significance of these subtropical corals coming from the Great Barrier Reef down to Sydney? Yeah, that's interesting because it's not just about the coral. So the the coral support um, coral uh, fish life. So together with the coral, we are starting to see subtropical species, fish, the fish that is usually, you know, brighter and more colored than the local one. So uh, again, last uh, few months ago, we, we saw an oval spot butterfly fish that previously has only been spot in uh, Port Stevens and uh, above in terms of uh, uh, position. So new species are coming. They are supported by this coral. And uh, the interesting thing is that this coral, in a way, at some stage, may have to compete with the pre-existing coral. I see. Because if the space become limited, they may have to really to 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 fight for for space and scientists have been mimicking mimicking this uh, fight in labs what they do they take the new coral and they place near the old coral they place them together and see who wins wow so who who do they think would win the old surely the old coral would win it's it's <laughs> it's established it's tradition <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So what they, the way they fight, they deploy filaments and they attack each other once they, that they are in contact. And uh, that's what they've discovered. If you put the pre-existing coral, the new one, the, the old one is winning uh, the war. So at least from the space perspective, if they come to a situation where the space is limited and they need to fight, the old one seems to be prevailing on the, on the new one. 
Wow. Sounds, look, it sounds like a delight for divers because they're seeing all these new species of coral and they're seeing all these new species of fish and perhaps even coral crabs that, that come with the new coral. And you said butterfly fish that they've never seen before. But the downside is you change environments and ecosystems and it has a big effect. Yeah, we still don't know the the net effect of this, uh, let's call it invasion or let's say extension, because they could be harmless refugees, you know, just extending the the, the, the array of uh, life that you can see, but they can become also dangerous invaders. Uh, we don't know the effect of this new coral and the effect of the fish that is coming together with the coral. So it's too soon to know, but um, in a way, yes, it's a, it's it's more variety to our eyes, which is, which sounds good, but that's the effect of the global warming. So definitely, there will be other species that will be misplaced because uh, as the water becomes warmer, and there has been an increase of uh, 100, and, uh, sorry, one degree and 0.2 in the, the last 100 years. Other species that like cooler water may actually disappear and move south. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I wanted to ask you, though, Marco, have you heard about what's happening in North Queensland? They've got this thing called the Museum of Underwater Art and North Queensland divers are going underneath the water with waterproof paper and graphite pencils and they're sketching the marine life underneath the coast of of Townsville. And they've been drawing these beautiful sketches underwater and then going back to the shores and perfecting their artwork. And it seems like the most amazing thing. They're calling it the Museum of Underwater Art. Yeah, look, whatever brings uh, sensitivity to the, the ocean is good. And uh, they've established this site. It's, um, they've put some structures on the water and they have been placing uh, little uh, pieces of corals in different locations. So they will watch this core. They kind of if they planted a seed, you know, in a, in a new territory, and uh, they are looking at uh, the way this coral uh, develops. Uh, more than from the scientific perspective, is the fact that this structure and having these uh, statues and uh, all these corals in 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 this context underwater brings awareness. People go there, they take picture, they post on social media. So it's another way to, you know, to remember people that uh, we have global warming and the facts and uh, how important is the ocean. Mm -hmm. Well, in Sydney today, it's a beautiful day across uh, across our great city. What are the conditions like for people wanting to go snorkeling or super diving? The conditions are a little bit average because we had a, a strong swell. I, I would say powerful swell because of the long period. The longer the period, the more power gets the swell. This week has been a little bit uh, uh, too powerful to dive. And now it's getting better. It's, there is still a little bit of uh, south as swell. The fact is that the visibility is not great. It's around the five meters overall. Um, but uh, and also the, the old, most of the sites will be exposed to south, so it will be a little bit rough to get in. And visibility not great. I would say we are in average condition when it comes to summertime. It's quite average to have this situation, okay. but uh, still doable. Okay, Marco, thank you very much for your time this morning. I'd love to go under the sea with you one day and have a look at these new coral species. Thanks for being here this morning. Have a great weekend. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Marcus Bordieri from the Sydney Underwater Gazette.